Welcome back on the AM show with me, Sweetie Abochi. Benjamin was just, um, has just left to go and host that national dialogue on cybersecurity. But let's pivot a bit from the conversation of honesty in politics. We know that um, in a political discourse, the temptation to manipulate truth for political gains is very prevalent. I mean, too prevalent, I should say. But the onus falls on us as citizens and leaders to demand accountability, honesty from our leaders. And we can only do that by assessing their you know, messages, interviews, and um, which is critical to assessing their character for office. In the spirit of that, I'm joining the, converse, I'm joining the studio by Courage Nobi, who speaks for Alan Tremanting, the Deputy Director of Communications for Alan Tremanting, to assess some of the things Alan Tremanting has been saying in a build up to election 2024. Courage Nobi, thank you for joining us thank this you. morning. Thank you, sweetie, for having me. Uh, it's it's a pleasure. You're a very pleasant person. Ah, so thank you. It's, it feels very relaxed to be in your presence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's just keep it calm. Always good to be back to Joy Studios, Joy okay. New Studios uh, this morning. Mm. Yes. So you speak for Alan Chermantin 100% now. Absolutely. No connection with the MPP? Ever since 25th September, when the Movement for Change was uh, launched, okay. um, I've been a part and parcel of it all the way to today. Um, no connection other than a former uh, member of the National Communications team of the NPP. So okay. every reference to the NPP today remains former for me. Former member, former member, former, 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 former. Okay. Present is Alan Chamartin, the Movement for Change, mm. and it will remain so, will remain so for a very long time well, to come. Because the, the movement has come to stay. Mm. Uh, the movement has is to ensure that we are able to deal with the duopoly, put it behind us and to chart a new path for the politics of Ghana. I'm glad you started on the note of honesty. Yeah. You know, I think it is the most important quality to require of any leader, any leader. And presently, if our politics from 1992 is anything to go by, there's a high deficit of that. And so more reason why Alan Martin is best suited and best positioned to be president this year, 2024. I like that you wanted to touch a bit on that. Do you think it's feasible or it's just an ideology that we can actually have politicians who are not, you know, mm. manipulating the, the facts just to gain some, something? I think, think that we will ever see a time where our politicians are 100% honest with us. I think we are at a point in our democratic dispensation where the Ghanaian people want something new. Mm. They've tried the... We, the one we know already, and they've realized it doesn't work, and it's never going to work. After 30 plus years, if it hasn't worked, you don't keep doing it. So they're looking for something new. They're looking for someone they can trust. They're looking for someone with a track record of honesty and integrity mm. in public service. And that is why the movement remains strong. We were right. told that it will not last two weeks. It's been almost six months and counting, mm. and we are growing stronger and stronger. And we were in the water region yeah. just yesterday. Yeah. You know, it's, it's exciting to see Ghanaians with so much enthusiasm about a third force, so much enthusiasm about a leader they know they can trust. And, and that's why it is possible. Okay, so Once you do that, okay. from there, you now have a president you can trust. Mm. 
And if you have a president you can trust, then you know that if he says, I'm going to create the enable environment for joy, um, for the multimedia group to be able to expand, then you know that you can plan with that. You can go to the bank with that because the necessary policies will be put in place without uh, the unnecessary parochial interest, you know, family and friends and all the things that matter. But a very dispassionate environment for every true Ghanaian to thrive. I think that's what Alasha Martin is about. So six months in, you've been saying a lot. Yes. And going places. Yes. Can you briefly just give me a summary of what you've been doing mm. so far? I mean, he said, uh, talked about reviving the, you know, Just Pong, what's it called, textile, 50% appointments from the youth, yes. turning the central region into the financial uh -huh. hub of the West African sub-region. Yes. What's the, what's the central theme of your campaign, the movement? Think the central theme is transformation. Mm. Yes. Politics and governance should lead to transformation in the lives of the people, in the infrastructure that they live by, and in the environment that they dwell in. So to that, he has what he calls the great transformational plan. Mm -hmm. He says, I've been in frontline politics for almost 40 years. In that period, I have learned some things, and I have gained some insight into the way uh, our country is run. And so with all of that knowledge, this is the plan I'll use to develop this space and transform it into a modern state should I be given the opportunity. And it's a six cluster uh, plan made up of 15 pillars, mm -hmm. 15 pillars. The six clusters are the economic cluster, mm -hmm. the governance cluster, we have the infrastructure cluster, uh, the uh, social services cluster. Mm -hmm. Then we have what we call behavioral and attitudinal change mm -hmm. and constitutional reforms. So these are the broad areas that he has committed himself to, okay. to make sure there's transformation. The first cluster, which is the economic cluster, is the one to which we had the National Economic Summit in 2nd of February last month. Mm. So out of that, we have 152 prescriptions for the economy. How do you fix the economy? You have 152 prescriptions. And that is what he is going about meeting How the first... How did he arrive at those prescriptions? You know, there, there's an Akan adage that says that Chikrun mm Kwejna and Anyansa Niti to wait. Mm. Uh, no one is a repository of knowledge. Mm. And so at the summit, various aspects were discussed. And we looked at four key aspects for building the economy. You're looking at macroeconomics, you're looking at um, industrialization, you're looking at agriculture and tourism. Mm. So the summit concluded that these four areas is what can fix the economy. And so out of the equation, if these four can fix it, what do you do to fix tourism? What do you do to fix agriculture? What do you do? That was what the discussion was about. And so it was out of that that for these uh, four areas, we had the 152 prescriptions, you know. Okay. And so everything he's saying on the tour is born out of a plan. So it's not as though he comes and says, okay, this book, what can I tell them? No, it's born out of a plan. And so is the content of the plan he's telling Ghanaians and beginning with the most important demography, if you ask me, and that is our traders and market women. Mm. They keep us going. Mm. They keep the society, I mean, in fact, during COVID, you had them do so much sacrifices, sometimes go to the market at midnight to make sure that there's food on our tables and all. So right. even after that, other demographics will be met as well. But part of the prescriptions is to say that every single region in this country must be given a focus based on something that is peculiar to them. So uh, that's why the Volta region becomes the skills, skills development, development hub. center or hub for yes. West Africa. For think? West Africa. Mm. You know, when he was trade minister, mm. I mean, Honorable Chamartin, he put together a policy that's attracted about 12 international automobile brands to be assembling cars in Ghana. They would definitely need skilled labor, all right? And what they are doing is that most of those, I heard a Honda CEO say that Ghana is the launch pad to the sub-region. So if you have that kind of investment coming in, you need to be able to meet the skills gap that will be created. Which better place than the Volta region with that? Because the Volta region historically has been known to be a place of very skilled artisanal labor force. I mean, is it about... Um, uh, farming implement, is it about even shotguns and you know some of the very complex things. 
you find it, and this is also a place that loves education. Mm -hmm. You know, the water has been noted for that. Um, they may not be natural resource rich. You, you understand? So, can we do something that develops a human resource to give them jobs, to give them access we to be have, part? We do have natural resources, but um, oh, in comparison to other spaces, okay. exactly. So, okay. so if you build the human resources. Mm -hmm then even the little natural resource you have can be better harnessed. But again, the human resource can now become a major export of the Volta region. You know? And this is not to say that, oh, it will be only people of the Volta region who will be beneficiaries. But people then move from other, other places within the country and the sub-region to Volta region to be trained. Okay, let's stay there for a, a little bit more on the Volta region, turning, transforming Volta region into yes. the Skills Development Center. Um, we know is as part of your transformation. Now yes. we know that the skill gap keeps widening because of yes. demand and supply in mm -hmm. discrepancies. How do you intend to actually do this? Okay. Because again, mm -hmm. we are talking about honesty in politics, and yes. I think that the promise of um, improving skills that we churn out, skilled labour that labor we churn out, should move beyond rhetorics. Absolutely. Especially when it comes to political um, campaigns and speeches. Mm -hmm. So how do you intend to actually turn the Volta region into the Skills Development Hub uh, Center for West yeah. Africa? Okay. And why not maybe work with the ones already, we already have? We have a system in this country of every government comes into power and they want to abandon something that the previous government had started. There was a lot of talk about the Saglami housing project yesterday during the parliamentary, you know, the ministerial vetting and all that. We know that there are some skills development initiatives and centers. I know of the Ashanti Gold um, Skills Development Center, something of the sort. Why do you want to start from scratch and build a new skills development center if you want to transform the economy quickly? Why? Uh, Honorable Lancho Martin understands that um, the interventionist approach that we've had over the years has not been helpful. Mm. And we all can attest to that. So you definitely need a new approach. But that new approach must also embrace what is existing. So for example, there's an, up, an airport at home. How do we get the airport to attract traffic? If we do not take deliberate investments there, that will, have the need, that will make it necessary for people to move to the region. All right? Mm -hmm. So in that plan, the whole airport is factored. So if there's a skill center, development center for the sub-region, people will need to move there. Okay? In moving there, there's road, transport that's being worked on. So you develop your, but you also develop your freight, your, your air transport, such that there'll be so many people going into the region that Africa World, for example, will now find the need to put a plane on that route. You know, there is a technical institute at Ho as well. All right. Can we put deliberate infrastructure there, deliberate machinery there for training? So that is what we are talking about. We are talking about a program that connects to the, very, the various aspects of the region. In that skills training would be something as very important as skills training even for tourism. The Volta region is rich with a lot of tourism centers. How do we incorporate that into it such that the place is so properly positioned with skilled resource, human resources to make people want to come there and come and come and come again? Uh, so it's a very robust, all-inclusive uh, strategy that we are looking at. Remember already the... Uh, about 67 um, business resource centers that Honorable Lacho Martin established across the country. You know, I think two or three of 67? those. Yeah, 67, okay. when he was minister. And, and it's still connected to, and that was just his plan as minister. Okay. So the plan is that we want to grow Ghana. If you want to grow Ghana, you need to be able to create jobs. But how do you create jobs, particularly youth enterprises? The youth need access to information. So can we put business resource centers dotted across the country such that Sweetie begins a business or has just a plan? Can he go to a place that would be like a one-stop shop where she gets technical support, even in drafting his, her proposal, how to assess financing for the ideas that she has and all. And when he, she gets that, she can now take off. How does she go about registering her business? You know, SNAID, GRA, all those requirements, procurement. So the center will assess with all of that. But when that is done, in case Sweetie's business idea needs some machinery, there are places that were also set up 
the technical machinery centers that will help you even develop machinery that does not yet exist. And you want to do all this? You're bringing fact, in what machinery, I'm, what I'm you're describing, training um, tourists, you're what I'm, what I'm describing now is actually what he did as minister. Mm. So he went to the ministry with a plan, and that's how come he was so effective. In fact, you I cannot talk about, about effective because he said that he was not as successful as he would like because he didn't yes. have enough resources to execute some of the, the plans that he what had. What he means is that for so. us, there are about 67 business resource centers. It could have been 120. Hmm. Okay. And if you check the government's budget over the years, of course, trade was not a priority. Hmm. You know, your priority is where you put the money. You understand? So even for the vehicle assembly plants, the government spent not a dime. It took the power of policy. And you know, the most important tool any government has is policy. And that is one of Alan Martin's forties. He understands the power of policy to attract investment. That's why he sat down, developed the Greater Kumase um, Industrial Village, submitted it to the World Bank. World Bank said, wow, this is fantastic. We'll give you $30 million to implement it. Met the Korean government, presented it, said, wow, this is powerful. We'll give $150 million. And because of that, that project is ongoing presently at Ejiso, uh, around the Buankra inland port. So you know Buankra inland port, which was started by uh, former President Kufo, which has been abandoned over these years. Now there's even more need to develop it because there's a whole industrial village that's been planned about it. So when you create that kind of ecosystem, that is how you create jobs. Not just employ, because you can come and say, oh, I'm employing 20,000 more policemen or 10,000 more fire service personnel. You have employed, but you've not created jobs. You create jobs by building industries, building factories. You know, and that is what Alan Chamartin is about. So if he promises Volta region that you're going to be the skills development hub for West Africa, he knows what he's talking about. He is the man with the plan. And on the plan, he knows where he's going to get the money from and then where he's going to put the money. And that's why he where, commits where himself. Where is he going to get the money from? How is he going to get money to implement all these strategic plans that plans. you're preaching? Yeah. OK. He has committed himself mm. to present the budget for Hopefully 2025. Hopefully you don't take us to another you know, IMF bailout program or HIPIC. I mean, I'm just saying. No, the, the, the road out of IMF, mm. the road out of HIPIC and all of that is industrialization. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's why he's committed himself to it. In fact, he's committed himself to answer your question, to present the budget for 2025 mm -hmm. before the elections. So in that budget, you know where he will get the money from and where he will put the money. You know, this is the man with the plan. He has a plan to transform us from poverty to prosperity, and he's very committed to that. And every single step he's taking is to ensure that that comes to pass. Of course, should Ghanaians wanting change, real change, I mean, vote for him to be president on, the, on December 7th. Um, so where did you again. say he's getting the money from again? From private sector. Hmm. You see, presently, with the current position of our country, we shut ourselves from um, the international financial market right. in terms of uh, loans and all. In fact, what we have with the IMF hmm. is just to show us up so that hopefully someone that the loan countries and all that will want to give us something. But I think that there is money with private sector. So if you have the right policy, private sector will respond by bringing in the money, like it's done with automobile. So if you have, for example, a robust strategy for water region, which is what he's talking about, skills development center, they need to know if we put our money in here, we'll get it back. They will come in with the money. You know, that is what he's talking about. And that's the only sustainable way forward. We cannot continue to borrow ourselves into debt and then borrow this economy into comatose like we find ourselves now. That has been the approach since 92, much longer by in the Fourth Republic since 92. And that's why I say even for infrastructure development, mm. government develops the plan. Are you aware that presently as we sit here, there's, there are no two regional capitals connected by a dual carriage express road? No two regional capitals in Ghana, mm. whether it's the former 10 or the current 16. That is obviously unacceptable. And he's coming to fix this, you say? Yes. Okay. At least every region, the regional capital should be linked by an express road. That is how you facilitate people and goods moving across the country. So you cannot say you want to industrialize without fixing that. So the plan has strategies for all of that. Now, when you build the 
plan, for example, that, okay, Volta Region is going to be the skills development center for West Africa. It means we need to be able to have express way that connects Volta Region to OT Region, to Eastern Region, to Greater Accra Region, the four regions that it connects it. In building that infrastructure, we need to look at freight, we need to look at roads, and we need to look at uh, river transport. Okay. All three. Okay. So build that. But how do you get that done? Government doesn't have the money. Put together the plan and let the private sector know how they can make profit from this business. You present it to them. When the private contractor comes, say, okay, I want to take on the water OT stretch of, say, 50 kilometers. Mm. We want dual carriage with two service lanes and also that's four lanes to uh, go in and come in. If you have that and he says, okay, I want to do that, the plan would have made him aware that in 15 years, he can recoup the investment that he'll be putting in with profit. Why? Because he can now tow that road mm. to make money. And, and that's what the, the strategy is. Now he, as a private um, engineer or the private businessman, will have to go to the capital market to raise the funds. So right. now that debt is not on government. <laughs> It sounds good on paper. It sounds really good the way you're saying it. But let's move on. You okay. talked briefly about economy and, you know, transforming water region yes. into a skills development hub. And then you talked about infrastructure, linking um, regional capitals and all that. What is the plan for governance? For governance? Then, yeah. Okay. What is your big idea for the, governance? The big idea for governance is that you need to have a very small government mm. and a very efficient one as such. Mm. So his committee said to say that what? I will not govern with more than 40 ministers. Is it amongst, feasible? It is absolutely feasible. There are 19 cabinet ministers in the constitution. Mm. There are 16 regions, so 16 uh, regional ministers. You have 35. It leaves room for five discretionary ministries. Because your discretion cannot be more than the instituted, like we have currently. Mm -hmm. There's higher discretionary ministries that the institute. He says, no, that does not work. Once you cut down government to that, what you focus on is efficiency. And anybody who has an opportunity to work with him, and, and we are experiencing that, will tell you that he has an eye for every single detail. But the other big issue for governance is that he is going to be an example of integrity. Okay. Peter Obi, the Labour Party candidate in Nigeria, said, made a statement, I agree. He says that the only way you can stop corruption is that you, the leader, you don't participate. So Alan Truman says is incorruptible. Absolutely. <laughs> if anything at all, the over 40 years involvement in both private and public sector mm. proves that he's incorruptible. He's incorruptible. He has a sterling character. You know, posterity will come back. I mean, eventually we all absolutely. see how all this plays out. Absolutely. But you see, it is when what I'm saying is not backed by a track record. That is when definitely uh, the truth will come to hit me in the face. Mm. But in his case, at least from 92, he was there. He served in, under President Kufo. He served under this government. And he continues to serve internationally and all. And not a single, either government official or even a private businessman dealing with him can ever speak. And he's put a challenge out there. And I will sit on, I mean, this is a huge platform. Mm. So that if anybody has any shred of evidence that suggests that Alan Martin is corrupt. They should come and put it out there. What do you think is the implication of, you know, this level of dishonesty that we're experiencing in governance to our, the foundations of our democracy? Because you're saying that he's coming in to do something different. He's yes. coming in as someone who's incorruptible, to be honest, and yes. serve with integrity. Mm -hmm. What do you think is happening to the very foundation of our democracy? What because you of have, the dishonesty that we Yes, what, what you have is an impoverished people, mm. albeit with our rich, resource richness, with rich human resources. What you have is stifling of destinies. You know? What you have is a situation where majority of your people flee this country as though you're a war-torn country. Mm. You know, as of September last year, over 4,000 nurses alone had fled this country. You know? What you have is a country that continues to wallow in poverty Albeit all the statistics and all that we are told about. Because there is no honesty. And I say that corruption and development are parallel lines. Mm. They never meet. They never meet. So Ghana cannot want to develop and still tolerate or entertain corrupt leaders. Ghana cannot. Should he gain the mandate to mm -hmm. be president, what would he do? How would he react to all these 
all our politicians who are currently in power who would be described as corrupt leaders. What's his plan I, for them? I think what the reality is, is that there are very good people in the NPP mm. who would not have found traction because they are not corrupt. There are very good people in the NDC who might not have found traction. There are very good people outside of the political establishment, the duopoly, who may not have found expression because they are not corrupt. These are the people that he will put together into what he calls the government of national unity. So, government so of national, national unity. unity. So the, one of the pluses of Alan Martin is that you are going to have the best of our people put together into one government to perform. We deals with, uh, does away with this uh, sharp, divisive politics and the winner-takes-all situation that, that we have. He's going to do that. He's committed himself to that. It is in putting that team together that he says 50% of those must be young people. Because he believes in the capacity of young people. He believes in what they can do. He believes in their energies, albeit guided by the aged. You know, so the advantage, for example, I have working with him is that mm. I am benefiting from his 40 plus years in, in, in uh, public and private service. You know, at the 22, he was manager of now Unilever. You know, so from 22 till today, rich corporate experience, rich governance experience <laughs> without corruption, without right. corruption. And so because he is not corrupt, he can check you when you are being corrupt. He can make sure you pay the price when you are being corrupt. And even in appointing people, he is making he will make sure to appoint people who do not have a history of corruption as well. But should you be tempted in any way, he can deal with you because you he does tell, not can you, can you tell an honest politician when you see one? You can tell when you see one. How would you tell? Or how For can example, you tell? if I tell you that I'm an honest politician, if I tell you that I'm an honest politician, and at the same time, at the same time, while saying that I'm an honest politician, um, I have uh, challenges when it comes to fidelity in marriage, for example, mm. then you, can, you shouldn't trust me <laughs> because that alone is a form of corruption. Okay. If I tell you that I'm an honest politician mm. and you can establish in any of my engagements to have lied, no matter how small it is, then you know that I cannot be trusted. If I tell you that I'm an honest politician and you, f you can find that I flip-flop on positions, you know, it's not about changing because of further and better information. But I flip-flop as and when, depending on who it affects, then you cannot trust me. So All it's right. out there. But most importantly, check my track record. Mm. Okay. How was I in school? How was I as a junior officer in any company? Mm. How have I been at the top of any institution that I've worked in? And how have I been in government for the time there? And he has rich experience across the board that is open for anybody to interrogate. And that's why we are able to say that at age, um, I mean, 60 plus, he can say, look at me, examine me, and throw anything at me if you find one. I don't think we have many of his kind in his generation presently in this country. I like to think that the movement for change is a new journey for both him and his people. So let's see how it goes. But before we go, time is not on our side. Let's touch briefly on social issues. This yeah. controversial anti-LGBTQ bill that's going back and forth on whether or not it will be passed into law. Where do you stand on, on this issue? I think uh, the movement for change stands with all Ghanaians, mm. you know, who have expressed their sentiments against it to the effect that it is un-Ghanian, mm. it's against our very social fabric, and so we support the uh, movement by the MPs, we support what Parliament has done to pass the bill, and we call on the President to, as a matter of urgency, assent to the bill. Because what about the this is, international repercussions that will come with passing this bill into law? I do not think there is any truth, particularly mm -hmm. even in the position of what the finance ministry said. Okay. Because, I mean, Uganda passed a more draconian law, I mean, than ours, but they are receiving a $120 million uh, deal from the same IMF. Um, we have engaged top level officials of the IMF in mm. various, and it is not even their position. The IMF currently is divided on the matter as we speak. And you cannot be, no matter how thirsty the toad is, it will not drink hot water. You know, Say that again. No matter how thirsty okay. the toad may be, mm. hot water not is not an option. Okay. And so as a people, we are saying that we have a part to develop, we have a part to transform, with or without these institutions. Of course, you need IMF and the likes because you are mismanaging your economy, mm. you are mismanaging your finances. 
in Alan Chimati, you are going to have a very credible manager of the economy that will not need to go to IMF. So that even gives us more reasons why we shouldn't sign this. But no matter what the threats are, I think our social fabric is more important than whatever dollar or cent we can get from these institutions. And Very that is well, what is course. threatened by this particular behavior that the law seeks to prescribe. Okay. Yeah. Running mate selection or whatever. choice of running mate. Very soon it will, it will be announced. And the commitment, is that, the commitment is that the person is going to be young. And the person is going to be a very good complement to the capacities and what uh, Alain Martin. Right. Represents. You must have a few personalities that you are, you know, you already targeting and assessing. The, the, Give us some names. So the assessment is ongoing. Yeah. The engagements are ongoing. Uh, it's very refreshing. It's a Anyone very refreshing Anyone from it, either of the two major political parties? Just a little breath of fresh air and you will know. <laughs> okay. Right. Thank you so much, Courage Nobi, who it's is the um, Deputy Director, Deputy of, Director Communication. of Communications yes. for Alan Chimantin's Movement for Butterfly Movement. Or movement, movement for, for Change. change. Movement movement for for change. Why and do they is, call it Butterfly Movement? Because that's our symbol. You know, the butterfly <laughs> represents <laughs> transformation, yeah. you know, okay. into a beautiful thing. Okay. And that is what, and the change we are talking about mm. is a change from the establishment, right? from both MPP and NDC who are very much like Siamese twins. They look very much alike. <laughs> right. There. Thank you so much for Thank joining you, us. Thank you, But um, there's still more to come on the AM show after this. Please stay with us.